Thank you for joining us on another episode of Real Voices. We have another great show for you. We have Viviana with us today. Viviana, tell us a little bit about yourself and who you serve. Well, my name is Viviana Luera. I've joined HomeSmart since I got my license back in 2006, August of 2006, and been in it for 14 and a half years. Okay. Takes a couple of years to get going, get your referrals out, and uh, I'm full force and hitting it strong. And I have the license state of Arizona, so I do all of Arizona. I do not stay to one little area. I can be in Tonopah, next thing you know, I'm in Apache Junction or Maricopa. Okay. So I'm everywhere and I service everyone. That's a little bit different from uh, the normal model. People typically just want to stay in a little bit neighborhood. Yeah. So what, how's, how's that helped you out? What's that been for you? Um, it's helped me out a lot. It's because you get to know all the areas. You never know where that buyer is going to want to be. If that buyer is searching Maricopa, but yet you're showing Goodyear, but they want to know about the area. Say, oh, well, I looked at the prices are over there are pretty good. Yes, they are. And let me show you where it's at. You take John Wayne Highway all the way in and we'll show you exactly new builds, reusable homes and resell. It's great. Okay. Yeah, it's just a little bit different, okay? Yes. So, um, 14 years. So, what what got you into the industry? What made you want to make that leap? Um, when I got divorced in 2006, I, I couldn't work a 9 to 5 job or 8 to 5 because of my special needs son. Okay. So, I figured I would have to do something that worked with my time schedule and my kids were in school, my daughter was in college, and I had to make it work for our time schedule for, for all kids. I had five children. And four, I'm married. My special needs son is with me, David. And um, yeah, it worked out great. It took me a while to pass my test, but I stuck with it. And it took me about six months to pass my test. And I finally did it. Okay. You mentioned that in the beginning, the first couple of years were a little rocky for yes. you. Yes. Um, what was that like? What, how did you get through that? Uh, it's not that it's rocky. It's just to get out there. Real estate 14 years ago was a lot different than what it is now. We have all classes now. We have a lot of training now. A lot of that was not there for you at the beginning. You have your brokers. Yeah, your brokers will guide you through, but there's a lot you have to learn on your own at the beginning. Now you have all the help. You have trainings. You have title companies that will train you. You have your brokers that will train you, and it's a lot easier right now. Okay. So what would you tell a new agent that's coming on? What would be some of the, I guess, the first steps that they, they need to take to make it? To make it just, first thing, read the contract. Okay. Know what you're having your client sign. Knowledge yourself on the contract first. And that way you know what you're talking about, get to know the areas of the contract. And then also, open house. Don't be afraid to do open house. It's always good to do open house okay. all the time. Okay, I, I like it. It's well, just understanding what you're having someone else sign, right? Exactly. Simple. Exactly. Simple enough. Yes. Simple enough. Okay. I got to go through that myself this year, 2020. I bought my first home on my own. A little one bedroom, one bath. It's the greatest feeling. I know exactly what my buyers are going through. <laughs> so it what was, was that like for you after all these years, seeing the, the other end of being on that, on the other side of the equation? I know, <laughs> I know exactly what they mean by where they turn in documents, but I turned this document over and over and over. I go, I understand but the different departments want it and you have to keep submitting it. Just keep track of who you sent and just resend it. And that was me okay. on the other end of the table, having to resend a document, resend it, resend it. And it's just, so you know what it's I like. know exactly what it's like from, from starting, from getting your credit repair. That's what I had to do. Okay. My credit was not great at all. Okay. I was in the low 500s. They repaired my credit. And we have the right people to guide the person to get the credit repair. And my credit score shot up and I was able to buy my little house. Awesome. So is this a service you also provide for your clients? I do not provide it, but we can contact them with the right persons to help them get to where they need to be. Okay. I do not provide that service. We have the information to contact persons who to contact to have collections removed, judgments, and they have lawyers that do it properly because I had it done myself. I experienced it myself. Now my clients, I need help. I've offered it to them and they've used it and we've closed on homes 400,000, 350, 200,000 with credit repair with the same person and it works out great. 
Awesome. So you do have uh, access to help help your clients yes. through that process. Yes. Okay. So yes. you're not just going to drop them off once. Oh, no, no, no. It's not the fact that they can't buy. It's just a matter of when they can buy. Okay. Everybody can buy a home. It's a matter of when are you able to go ahead and start the purchase because of, you know, everybody's situation is not the same. Every right. si client is different. Every client. Makes sense. Okay. So tell me... In your 14 years, what do you think the, has been the biggest misconception about who you are or what you do as a real estate agent? Of uh, well, like what they miss. Yeah, like what do you people think some of uh, what you do and and it is usually isn't right. So what is something that you feel like some they don't understand about what you do? <laughs> okay, so the one thing they don't understand is like once we close on the deal. They still call on you for repairs right. and things like that. Okay. And they have to understand that my purpose is to help them purchase the home, do the contract, show them properties, guide them through the process. But once we close, we're literally done with the deal. Right. But we keep contact with those clients because they do not understand that our due diligence to them is literally done. And they don't understand that. But us as a good agent and keep getting referrals, I guide them to the right person. Okay. We give them phone numbers. We give them contact information to go ahead and take it on themselves and explain to them, you know. Makes sense. My real estate part is done, but I can help you get to the right person to help you with the situation you're having at this moment. Okay, makes and, sense. Yeah. Awesome. So where are you from? I'm actually born and raised here in Arizona, from okay. Buckeye, Arizona. Okay, so here, born, born and bred, huh? Yes, okay. all, right. all I, my I, life. All right. Buckeye was a little town with one elementary, one junior high, and one high school. <laughs> awesome. Yes. All right, growing up in little little Buckeye, what was that like? Who did you, I guess, who did you think you'd be when you grew up? Um, I actually wanted to be in the Air Force. Okay. <laughs> but that didn't work out. I never even tried for it or whatever but it was in my mind why do you but think i was force? like the mil military i actually like luke air force base okay so just being near it and oh singing. yeah okay. yeah i lived in el mirage after my divorce for three years and never jets never bought it was pretty cool yeah. until this day they still are yeah. and um but never never foreseeded to go forward on that path why, why do you think you you didn't do that what was in your heart? Don't know at the time. Okay. You're young, you're a teenager, had a kid at 19. Mm -hmm. Changes your life. Right. Changes what steps you want to go through. Let's talk about that, if you don't mind, just for a minute. So um, at that age, what, I guess, what were your, your plans for at that point? When, were you married? Did you get married at that time? Or shortly no, after? No. Okay. Uh, shortly after, yes. Within okay. a couple of years, yes. You say it changed your life. Um, what were your tra trajectory before that? What were you looking to do right, right before that? Before you got got pregnant. Um, just working all the time. We've been working since we were young kids, okay. and uh, so we've worked all our lives. My father passed away when I was eleven years old, so my mother, my brothers raised us little ones, and we've worked all our lives. So we didn't really have a career path that we were going to follow through with because of the lifestyle we grew up in. We were farm workers as growing up. We worked in all the agriculture. Okay. So, so different the, life. The Air Force was just kind of a dream for you. Oh yes, oh yeah, it was actually kind of cool because okay. when we worked in the agriculture, that they flew over us all the time. It was wow. kind of cool. Wow, so I guess growing up in that, what would have been the most unique way you've ever made money? To help the family, I guess. What would have been something you did? Back then? Yeah, or most unique way you've ever made money, I guess. Uh, the unique way of making uh, money. As a teenager, yeah. a kid. Yeah, whenever. <laughs> We've had plenty of kids yeah. stories too. So, yeah. Yes, me and my brother, we used to go around selling watermelons in a, in a wagon. Sell them for a dollar. So, so you just, the red wagon, you pull it oh, out? Oh, yeah. We go knocking on everybody's door, but I selling watermelons for a dollar. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, um, 
the Dunkins. If you see these trucks called the Dunkins, oh my gosh, we used to cut their grass for six dollars every other week. Okay. <laughs> uh, but to where I mean, we all work. Like I said, the only work that we did back then was agriculture. Yeah. Um, I never had something to where it really made me a lot of money to contribute to the family. Okay. We all contributed as one. I like it. And we did not go to work and keep the money in our pocket. We worked and we got paid and went to our mother to pay bills. We weren't the ones that say, oh, well, I made, I worked five hours, this is my money. We never did that. That's a unique perspective. Um, I've, uh, I'm married and I have a wife and, you know, they were a little bit more well off than I was growing up. And so seeing like the family, like some of the kids would come home to stay for a while to save a little bit of money to buy a house or something. I'm like, wait. Where I grew up, when you came home, you had to pay, you know, help pay and sustain exactly. the house. So it was just a little bit different seeing yeah. seeing a, the other side of that. So I can I can appreciate um, yeah. I can appreciate that. Well, who inspired you when you were a little kid? What who who lit that fire in you? Just as we grew up as all hard workers, all brothers and sisters, and my mom, they would they just pushed us to work as when we were little. There was never one particular person that inspired me to be a hard worker. It was just, that's the way we were brought up. Just seeing it. Just seeing it and living it. We weren't the type of family that we have friends over on the weekends or after school. Never. It was after school to work. Our dad would pick us up. I remember being little and we'd go to work. Or, you know, we was just weekends we were working. So it wasn't one of those, oh, I get the weekend, can my friends come over? Never. Mm. Never. Interesting. Is there anything you'd redo, if you could, anything in the world? I would have stayed in high school and graduated. Okay. I was so close to graduating. Okay. That I would redo. Okay. I think I had a year and a half left to do. Okay, I, I understand that. So what would you tell the kids then? <laughs> Stay in school. Stay in school. <laughs> At least get your, get your diploma, get your high school degree. Stay in school to get your high school degree because now it's just such a mandatory everywhere. And uh, the places where it never used to be, it is. Right. And I've heard that it is. Right. I mean, you got to have a and college degree now pretty much to work anywhere. So yes. So it's, it's pretty, it's, pretty uh, tough. Yeah. Do you, you keep your family still tight-knit, all your brothers and... They all, they're all... Well, we got a big family, you know. Not everybody's a tight knit family. Uh, there, we all talk, but are we super close? No, we're not super close. Everybody has their lives. Everybody has their families, and uh, you have the one or two that you are super close with, and then you have the ones that you hardly ever see or talk to. Understood. That's family, right? There's that's, fourteen that's of us, so wow. there's okay. a lot. That's family. Yeah, it's family. Yeah. There's always one has a little feud with the other. There's one that oh, then you have the ones that are close and. Right. That's normality. That's family. And a family of 14. <laughs> that, that is definitely family. Yes. Um, so just trying to figure out, like, you know, going through your, your career and where you are now, um, what, what do you think continues to keep you motivated and, and moving forward to, to being who you are? What, what inspires you now? Experiencing what, I, what they experienced. Okay. I experienced it myself. And now I understand the feeling when you give them the keys and the tears that come with it and the hugs and uh, they're just so excited that they thought they would never be able to purchase a home, but yet we made it happen. And there's lots and lots of families that I've told them, you know, you can buy a home. You just need a little help and a little push and a little guidance. The guidance is the biggest, strongest thing for that person because if they have no knowledge of where to start, and you're, you can guide them through the process, that's all they need is a little guidance. Everybody can purchase a home. It's just a matter of when. I like that. Everybody. I yes, like it. everybody. It's just a matter of when you can buy it. They just need that little guidance and the security that they can do it. I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. So what is maybe the most interesting or craziest thing you've, you've ever done? The most interesting with anything? Yeah, anything. I went and got my motorcycle's license. <laughs> I, 
that's pretty I bought cool. a Harley. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So you're a Harley person now? Yeah. I'm not a so-called Harley rider. <laughs> but I do have my motorcycle. I have a beautiful bike. Uh, it's a Harley. It's a Sportster, but it's nice. Nice, nice. It's okay. nice. I love yeah. my bike. I, I like it. I'm not as adventurous when it comes to those kind of things. So, yeah, for me, that's pretty, pretty wild. It's, it's fun. I'm not one of those everyday... Um, Freeway riders, no. I would not get on the freeway with that motorcycle. No. I just <laughs> you haven't made it there road. yet? Oh, no, okay. and I never will. Okay. No, I will not get on that freeway with my bike. No. So, so you're not but. as crazy as, as I'm no, thinking. No, 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 no. I'm not this leather hard rider girl. Oh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. No, no. That's awesome. Well, um, I, I always like to ask, you know, what inspired people, something that they've read, um, anything in a book? Do you have something that that you've read in your life that that touched you? That you know you, that stayed with you? Mm. I always read about like little short stories of movie stars and everything. But the only one that I've never really never had time to read to pick up a book mm -hmm. and read a story. I remember picking up a book and it was like, it was a good book, but then a sad book because it was a true story. Okay. How a kid was raised in California and how he was abused. And um, it was a really sad, sad story, but it inspired you to be a good parent because that book was so bad where that child, and actually the person that wrote that book was the victim and now has all these, um, what do they call them? Um, to where if you're abused, you can come to them. And he would live, they had him living in a basement in a cot with no blanket, no nothing. And freezing cold with like nothing, but his care. Under, nothing but his underwears. And it was just a wow. sad storybook that I picked up. And I happened to read the whole book. That's the only book I've ever, probably ever read the whole book in my life. And it's always stayed with me, and um, everybody always says, well, you're such a good mother, this and that. And they go, how did you raise your kids? And Because all my kids are working kids, and I was like, one thing you do not ever have to do is yell at your kids. You talk to them. And uh, what they hate, kids hate doing is cleaning. Right. I never sent them to their room to go do this and that. I make them go clean. Right. And they i'm inspired with my kids i'm happy with my kids um they're all grown four of them are grown married and they each have one child one my sec my third child has two but i'm proud of all my kids Good. they've done very well for themselves very independent every single one of them i appreciate you sharing right. that story um it just thinking about the books um you know i yes. i love books but it wasn't something that i, I didn't grow up reading books. My wife is always like, you never read? I'm like, it wasn't something we did. It was just... Yes, exactly. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't important. It wasn't something exactly. that we Exactly. It on, wasn't so. important if we were focused on as you we were working. Right. Books was not the first right. thing. It's, it's, I was kind of raised in that similar environment. But when I started picking them up, I, I fell in love with, yes. you know, just stories, people's stories and their lives. Exactly. And, you know, things like that. I so. loved school. And the one thing that our parents did, because we would go to work real early, we never got to school on time. We were always 15, 20 minutes late every day. And we went to school probably three days out of the week instead of the five. Oh, we were always in trouble because of that. We always get yelled at in the office, but our parents told us what to do back then, not the school. So I didn't hate studying. I didn't hate books. We just didn't have the time to read books because our life was all about work. No matter how old you were, it was about work and you're going to work. And so I like reading. I do. But to get interested in a book, I don't have the time for it. So I grew up that way. Yeah. But my kids, my kids read. My kids love to read. They have more always time, make right? Sure, I always make sure they read. Right. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. I really yeah. do. It's um, being upfront and honest with that. So yeah. thank you so much. Well, that's kind of all the questions I have for you. I appreciate you coming on. But we always like to kind of give you the last word, um, speak to where we can find you and you know, just anything you want to say. 
sports name? Oh, well, you can find me. Uh, my team is called Arizona Rising Realty Group. I have an office in Goodyear at 13166 West McDowell and also one at Arrowhead, which is 17215 North um, 72nd Drive. So I have an office there. Um, you can always call me at 623-670-1809. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. I appreciate you inviting me here. You're welcome.